This is the circular ring. Its plan is to take on the aura ring. Also an aura ring. Is this an aura ring? But is it worth it? Is it the best sleep and fitness tracker out there? Would you wear that over the aura ring? No. What if it didn't have a subscription fee? This is my first look after using it for only 14 days. App is still in beta, by the way. First, let's talk about the hardware. Now, this is the box that it comes in. Um, this is kind of what it's going to look like. It's going to say, you know, sleep better, be better, human beings. This is the size 11 ring that I have. I'm, I would like a size 12. It's kind of a bit small, but we'll talk about that. Inside, you're going to have the actual ring itself. It definitely looks and feels very plasticky. Like, I feel like I could almost crush this ring if I tried... <laughs> Hard enough. It doesn't look as sexy. It feels like a little cheaper than the Oura Ring. Whoa, interesting. Like it's made of plastic or something. It has my name on it. <laughs> this, it looks cheap. It looks like, I don't know. But it, otherwise it looks really similar. Right? It's yeah, like it's called the circular ring. Okay. They're trying to... And then inside you have the charging sensor ports that kind of protrude out of it, which is a little bit dangerous. The prongs, why is it so sharp? Um, if you can if you can see there they protrude out of the bottom So I've noticed that it kind of scratches my finger when I take it on and off not an ideal scenario And what's really confusing is it's flat on the charger So ideally I would have had the charger be protruding and the ring be flat So not sure why that was a design decision. I do love that it's USB-C on the charger The charger is absolutely tiny and it comes with a keychain ring so I can take it with me wherever I go and The ring will just slide right on like a magnet which is super convenient and you can just take it off I did have a motive ring, which is a very similar concept. This is the charger. I couldn't find the ring, but it's the magnets are actually much stronger on this charging device, but I do love that they stole this a very small charger. It's much smaller than the aura ring, which is amazing. There's a button on the side here that you can use to snooze and stop the alarm. Um, and then they do have one sensor that's right there for capturing data with their LEDs. This is the size 11 ring right here and then it comes with two they gave me two encasing so they're very nice they gave me this encasing right here i did buy this device myself they gave me a discount but they did not give this to me for free so just keep that in mind we're going to grill them extra hard because of that <laughs> <laughs> company don't hate me uh, this is the encasement um this is this that put my name on it which is super kind shervin um this encasement i think is a little bit larger than the actual ring so when i do put it on uh, it does move around a little bit, um, and especially at night when I'm wearing the ring, sometimes it'll cover the button. But the, the silver one is also a size 12 on the size 11 ring. It does fit a little bit better, but the, there is a little bit of movement, right? If you wiggle it, and then sometimes it'll cover the button because I move a lot in my sleep. So I do like the philosophy of this little wrapper piece, but it's kind of hard to take on and off, but it does slide forward and backwards on the actual ring itself. Um, but yeah, in terms of like how it feels, it's a pretty flimsy, um, but it's a ring, right? If it's gonna do what you want it to do, why does it matter how it feels? Uh, it is relatively thick. So if I put it next to the Aura Ring Gen 3, it's definitely like half the weight. It's much lighter. I'm saying, this, I'm saying like literally the thickness of that. I'm not saying the diameter. Like actually the Aura Ring Gen 3, the sensors are kind of round, as you can see right there. It's a little bubble that pops out and it's round, so it's soft when you're sliding it up and down your finger. Whereas right here, you can even see it's chipped a little bit. Um, one side is black and the other side is the metal because the black has already chipped off of the ring So in terms of quality build, uh, I don't know how long this will last but the charging ports are kind of scary I feel like I'm always gonna cut my finger when I'm taking it off So what I do is I wet my hands and I wash it with water and soap and that makes it much easier to take on and off So something to keep in mind if you're gonna take the ring off just be careful <laughs> Just be careful. You don't want to cut yourself and the soap and water does help so soap and water and I can remove the ring but yeah, it is pretty tight. It doesn't really fit on a lot of my fingers. It will fit on here. I'm a little uh, swollen right now, but yeah. But I do love that the aura ring is rounded right here rather than having these protruding chargers that almost look like they're knives, <laughs> especially on the ring, which is a very sensitive area. Now, in terms of the battery life, it does last 1.7 days with the performance mode, which is what I'm using, and then 3.3 days in the eco mode. Uh, that just depends on how often it, it's actually pulling data using the ring. Otherwise, in terms of hardware, this is kind of what you get in the box. If you buy multiple variations, it'll be right there. They have kind of the how-to guide. Um, and that's really it. This is the circular ring box. I know a lot of people have been curious if it's actually going to be released. It's been out. The biggest thing I've learned with Kickstarters is they typically take forever to launch the product. I never buy Kickstarters anymore. That's just a rule that I have for myself because you never know. I've purchased like three or four that I never received the product. So something to keep in mind, you're not actually buying the product, but you're investing in the company with the hope that they'll give you whatever product they promised. So this is real. It's coming out. I love that you're, you're being a competitor. We need more in the space like this. Now let's talk about the software. Now let's open up the app. One thing to note about the app, the app is still in beta. 
So they do tell you that, like, thank you early users. Something to keep in mind, it's still a little bit buggy, but they're working on fixing it, and they've been very fast at trying to improve the app. So I've been very impressed at how fast they're updating and improving the app. Inside, what's really cool is they have a little leaderboard here. I can see how I rank in terms of everyone else who's sleeping. I am number 12. Yeah, and if you look at that, I am the number one American when it comes to sleeping. Congratulations to myself. They have some settings that you can go ahead and change inside of here. Uh, and then the alarm clock, which is a neat feature. I did use the alarm clock feature and it vibrated me to wake me up. So this has a built-in alarm. So like you can set an alarm and the ring will vibrate to wake you up. Like I said, it's a little buggy. There's no data here right now. Maybe I need to use the alarm clock to see that data. But you tap alarm here to actually turn on the alarm. So if I wanna set an alarm, I can just tap the alarm right there. I can say I want the alarm on, I set the time. Uh, I just use a snooze if you want to snooze. When you press it, it's just gonna snooze again and keep vibrating until you wake up. The smart alarm is gonna keep snoozing until it realizes that you're out of bed. So there's an airplane mode, which is cool. You can turn that on and off. Um, you do have to press the button and put it back on the charger. I think that, re oh, there it is. There's the alarm and that is kind of what it looks and feels like it's gonna vibrate. It's gonna vibrate, that's the alarm right there, and if you wanna turn it off, you double tap. Boom, and then it's gonna say, okay, vibrate to notify that it's done alarming, which is really neat. They put a little vibration motor inside of this ring. I think that's pretty freaking amazing. Uh, sleep analysis, they'll give you like a sleep score as well as how much time you slept. You know, the typical amount of data, right? All your different sleep stages, how you slept today, as well as a trend over the last seven days, and you can tap on each of the data points if you wanna see exact numbers. Um, they carry a lot of different things, like sleep quality score, your hours slept, uh, your heart rate, and you can see that over the last 30 days. <clears throat> HRV data is in there as well. Your breathing rates, temperature variation, which is kind of cool, and SpO2 information. It is a little slow to load, but it works and the data is there. And I can see that trend over time. When it comes to activity analysis, same thing. And you can actually go ahead and through the calendar and see the activity for all the different days if you want. But it'll do steps taken, like how much I walked, my calories, VO2 max, my heart rate max. And it'll give me a whole bunch of other data that I want to see here as well. As well as I can come down here to see these charts, like trends over time, right? Activity intensity, the number of steps over the last seven days, my calories burned, cardio points, energy score, heart rate and even my resting heart rate. So they do provide a lot of data. Now it's just a matter of, are you gonna look at this data and are you gonna use these insights to better your life or not? Um, and they do give you insights in this little feed down here. I would hoping they put the sleep score and the activity score up here, but this is beta. They said they're gonna update these features, so hopefully we see that soon. Um, like they said, early access. Here you can see all the, the sleep kind of report that they're giving me in the morning. Um, it'll show me how much I slept, what my sleep was like, my scores for each of the categories. Right, and I have just like a feed of information. When I did get it, there's a 14 day calibration period. So I wasn't really getting all this like cool data until 14 days, which was a little frustrating, but you just have to stay with it. Uh, they might change that feature. I'm not sure why that was required. Um, so there's a big calibration. There's like quizzes you have to answer each day so that way they can understand your data points. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of calibration days that I had to go through and that's why this video is coming out a little bit later than I wanted. And then the other neat feature is they do live measurements. So if we're gonna put this ring on here, now we can't take it off, I'm married to my health. And see, if I put my hand down here, I can hit start. This is not intended to diagnose, right? This is not a medical device. I don't wanna be moving my finger. And it's gonna take about 10 seconds for it to get live measurements of my data. Um, we're gonna be able to see heart rate, my HRV oxygen level. I, there is no other device that I've seen that does live HRV. The only one, other one is Leaf Therapeutics. I have this device right here. If you wanna see a video about Leaf Therapeutics, let me know in the comments. Uh, there are blood oxygen sensors, which I have two of these blood oxygen sensors right here, so I'm gonna compare that to what we're seeing in this data right here. It looks like my HRV is 137 right now, 98% oxygen. My heart rate is 90 beats per minute. So let's get the Apple Watch as well in here. So we're getting 82 beats per minute. My Apple Watch is saying 75. Oh, the 74, look at that, they're pretty close. 75, yeah, so they're within range right now. Um, they do say finger-based wearables are more accurate than wrist-based, but the Apple Watch is pretty freaking strong when it comes to capturing my heart rate. 86, 80, 84. So they're relatively close. It looks like they're trending in the same and similar direction. Now, now let's see the SpO2. So this is saying 86, 82. So the, this also tracks heart rate as well. 97% on this, 96%, 98%. So each one is off by 96, 98, 98. So these two are close right now in terms of SpO2. This one I would say is more accurate because it's like almost medical grade. They sent me this for COVID testing in New York. 62 beats per minute. This says 87 beats per minute. 
So something's happening right now. All these numbers are kind of falling off a little bit. Maybe I moved my hand too much. It looks like it's recalibrating. We're getting back to the same point. 97%, 99%. They're all within one to 3% of each other. So just, you know, these are wearables. These are not medical devices. You take it all with a grain of salt. But in terms of heart rate, they seem to be relatively close. This guy is saying 87 beats per minute. This one's saying 88. Circular is saying 74. And my Apple Watch is saying 89. So it is off by 10 beats per minute. That's not ideal. Uh, 99 beats per minute now on circular, 83 on Apple Watch, 85 on the medical device, and 82 on the other device. So it seems to be fluctuating a lot more and higher and lower. So, and, but the data accuracy says good here. So that's interesting to know. Ideally, if I'm doing an activity, right, it would still be able to track my heart rate while I'm moving. So that, those are the data measurements, SPO2 for the circular ring. Last, I'm gonna compare it to all the other devices out there that I use on a daily basis. So they say one of the most accurate sleep trackers around is the Dream Headband. This actually measures your brain waves so it can really understand your sleep stages. This is what it looks like and you wear it on your head. It's not ideal, it's not something I enjoy wearing. I don't wear it often. That's accurate? I don't know, I literally just got it two days ago. Right. Is it gonna give me, give me the behavior change that I actually want? Or is it just gonna screw my life up and tell me that I slept like shit all the time? But I'm gonna compare one night of sleep data to the circular ring to see kind of how much is it different. If we go look at the circular ring for last night, and then my dream headband. If we look at the sleep stages, we can see two hours and 20 minutes of deep sleep versus one hour and 17 minutes of deep sleep. That's a drastic difference. REM sleep, two hours and 10 minutes versus one hour and 14 minutes. Light sleep, two hours 54 versus light five hours and 13. And then wake, 29 minutes versus nine minutes. So it seems to be that these numbers are drastically different. Let's compare it to the aura ring. Just to make sure, like, are our numbers off? Why is it so different? Now, if we look at the aura ring, awake, an hour. So that was closer to the dream headband. Nine minutes. REM, three hours versus one hour and 14 minutes. Light, two hours, 37 to five hours. I don't know how I got five hours of light. Deep, two hours and 12 minutes to deep, one hours and 17. So just by looking at the numbers, they're an hour off. I like to say all wearables are wrong, but some are helpful and use the data all with a grain of salt. The whoop strap, 29 minutes awake, nine minutes. Light, 347, five hours. Deep, two hours, 15, one hour, 17. REM, two hours, 22, one hour, 14. So it seems all the other trackers are in the two hour range for deep and REM sleep, but it seems like the circular is in the one hour range. Let's try one more. I have something called a bio strap, not a great device, but I still wear it for some reason. This is also a wrist-based wearable. And they only, they take REM and deep and they combine it. All right, let's compare it to the Apple Watch because that does now have sleep stages. So let's see. If we go to show more sleep data, we can see here awake 30 minutes, nine minutes. REM, one hour 59, one hour 14. So the first device that actually is under the two hour mark. Core, five hours 20. Sleep analysis, five hours 13. So the Apple Watch and the circular ring are closer in terms of some of this data. Deep, 36 minutes on the Apple Watch and one hour 17 on the circular ring. So really, what can you trust? This is all the information that's like, okay. All right, if we compare the eight sleep to the circular ring, as you can tell, the lines are drastically different. I don't think there is a strong correlation. It doesn't give me the times, but it gives me the percentages and it doesn't give me the overall time. So we'll just take that with a grain of salt. They're definitely different here, but I did get a 100% sleep fitness score versus a 96 on the circular ring. And the last device will be the Aura Ring Gen 3 because I just did the Gen 2. So it looks like 31 minutes awake versus nine, two hours and eight minutes of REM, two hours and 24 minutes for deep light, three hours and 28 minutes. So as you can tell, it is definitely different on the Aura Ring Gen 3 as well. So who can you trust? I don't know. The biggest thing is like how you wear this, right? If the ring is moving, the sensors are gonna be in a different spot. Like all that defines how well it can track your sleep. And then on top of that, they need to have a good algorithm that can guess your sleep stages because really the best way is to use something that goes on your forehead and measures your brain waves. And then even then, a lot of scientists will disagree on which sleep stage you're in. So there's a lot of different challenges with tracking this. And I think overall, this is very interesting. It is another wearable. If you're thinking about buying a ring, then maybe you could try this out. I, I'm a bigger fan of the O-ring. It just looks cleaner. It looks sleeker and their hardware just more built out. So if you're willing to spend more money, go with the Aura Ring. If you're trying to save every single dollar, the Circular Ring is probably a great cheaper alternative. But I think overall, Apple Watch is hands down my favorite. I'll have an Aura Ring versus Circular Ring review coming soon. So make sure to subscribe and turn on your post notifications to be able to see that. Peace.